Hi guys, in this video tutorial, we will see how we can implement YOLO V8 segmentation with deep sort tracking ID plus trails. So in this lecture, we will see the implementation on Google Colab as well as on Windows and Linux as well. So this is an end-to-end -end tutorial in which I will explain you the complete code in depth. Explanation of the code will be provided as well. And we will go through all the details that you need to implement this project on your side either on custom data set or using the pre-trained data set of MS Coco data set. So you can see here, uh, these are the trails, like you can see here, these are the trail, and you can see that each object, for example, car, truck, has been assigned a unique ID. Like you can see here, 167, 159, 158, each object has been assigned a unique ID, plus we can see the trails as well. So this is how we successfully implemented the deep sort tracking. So moving ahead, so before moving towards the board, uh, let me tell you about one thing. Uh, we have uh, launched our Patreons program where you can get exclusive access to all the projects. Uh, like, um, let me show you. So what uh, we will be uploading here, two to three projects each week, like in a month, our target should to upload 10 projects a month. So if you have uh, brought this membership, get exclusive access to all projects, you will get access to all the pro projects, which will be only provided here. The video tutorials will not be uploaded of, uh, of these projects into the YouTube channel. So let's say, for example, uh, yesterday, I have uploaded this pro project, which is road signs detection and traffic, uh, road signs and traffic light detection and color recognition using YOLO V8. So in this project, we have detected uh, road signs and traffic lights not only uh, detected uh, road signs, but we have also identified what basically these road signs are. For example, pedestrian zebra crossing, and let me, this is a parking signs we have detected. Okay, now let's just move ahead if I show you. Uh, okay, just um, this is the stop sign we, we have also detected. Like you can see that we have detected the stop sign plus further ahead, uh, we have also detected this is the red light. You can see that the colors of the light as well. And this is also, we have detected the sign plus a do not enter sign. So we have detected 22 different road signs as well and different traffic lights, colors, and all this. So this is a complete project uh, you, you can use in, in any of your projects. So we will provide you a demo video, how you can run on this script on your site. Plus uh, we will, uh, in case of any, in case of any issue, in this membership, we have included a live chat as well. So yeah, you can see here the live chat option as well. For example, if you cannot uh, run it on your site, you we can have a Zoom call or as well as through live chat, we will uh, help you to sort out this issue. Now, there are other membership plans as well. You can check it out and in detail as well. So now moving back to the code. This is our code for YOLO V8 segmentation deep sort tracking. This is the GitHub repo, uh, which I have created a few minutes ago. So you can see here, so this is all, all our GitHub repo. In this GitHub repo, I have provided the Colab file as well as the uh, steps to run code on Windows or Linux. So let's first discuss the Colab file. So if I just copy this link and open on this, because uh, in this, um, in this my Gmail account, I have the uh, space issue, so it might uh, does not run very successfully because my drive is full. Okay. So you can see that this is our GitHub repo. So uh, in this uh, GitHub repo, I have say that this is a single click, a single Gola Gola file, a single click solution. So what is a single click solution? Let me show you. So single click solution, like you can see that first I go to runtime, change runtime as GPU, then I will just let run all, nothing else I will do. Okay. Okay, I think I've done this project previously as well. So just disconnect and delete the previous runtime. Oh, just reconnecting. and just clicking on run all, nothing more. So I'm not clicking on any cell. I'll just click on run all. This is a single click solution file. 
so let me explain you the first step by step for example here we are cloning the github repo we are just importing all the script, script files in the github repo over here checking the current directory like this is our default directory now setting our uh, current directory like after we have this github repo over here we just copy path and just paste it over here to set this our current directory then we are installing all the dependencies which are in our setup.py file and the, like all required libraries as well uh, but, and next we are moving towards our required directory which is over here we are just moving towards this directory because we need to perform segmentation as well over here and basically we are performing object tracking using deep sort so we are downloading all the deep sort files from the google drive directly into the notebook and unzipping those files so this is the deep sort folder which you can see inside the segment folder because we are performing segmentation and here i am just uh, download a sample video for testing from google drive so here i am downloading a sample video for testing from google drive and directly porting into here like you can see that and just running this as well so now you see that i did not click a single select cell in this notebook so it might take like you can see now it's implemented over here so let download and see this video in large So now you can see that uh, we have the unique ID with each object and we have the trails as well. Like you can see the lines, these are the trails and these are the unique ID with each object. Now let's see the next video. So we are downloading demo video two, demo video three from directly from Google Drive and let's see. And now we are running the script and let's see what it does. So this is a single key solution or because I have not clicked on any other cell, I've just click on run all. So let's see, it might take uh, 20 to 30 seconds more. But it's just successfully run, now we are checking over here. After this, we will see the implementation on Windows. So you can follow the same steps we uh, implement on Windows on only Linux system to run it on your site successfully as well. So I hope it will be able to run it successfully. Okay, that's good. Yeah. For example, now you can see that uh, download this video. And it's not Like you can see that uh, we have a unique ID with each directory object, thus we are performing the tracking as well. Quite good and cool. Okay. So let's move towards the how we need can implement on your Windows as well as I will explain the complete for there as well. So this is a previously open project and just close it. Let's start from the start. I am going to this yellow weird variation yellow weird. Tutorial. You'll just write the name of the file as tutorial because I'm just making the tutorial here. So in the while, uh, if as over. File the loading. So this is my YouTube channel. I in the current YOLO V8 series, I have also made video on real-time object tracking using YOLO V8 and Deep Sort. Uh, this does not involve segmentation. So if this is plus number of vehicles pointing has been implemented here as well. So if you haven't checked this video, do check it as well. Plus, um, I've also made a video on how to run YOLO V8 on Google Colab, like how to perform detection and segmentation. So in this video, there is no deep sort tracking else. This is simple implementation of YOLO V8, segmentation and detection on Google Colab. So let's move towards the PyCharm. First of all, I will go to the, after opening PyCharm, you just need to go to open. Then move to YOLO V8. This is my folder, my own data. So I have created the folder by the name 
tutorial. So just click on this and cross click it and this window launch it. So we just need to follow the steps I have mentioned over here. So just need to copy and just write it over here. Just paste it over here and press enter. And just now just go over here and just click over here. Now just basically, first of all, we have to clone the our repository of this, this repository. Then we are just going to the clone folder. Like uh, first we have uh, get, uh, cloned the GitHub repository. This is our GitHub repository. Now I'm going inside this folder by writing CD means CD means current directory. I need to go to this current directory, okay? So now I am just installing all the dependencies. What are the dependencies? Basically, uh, these are all the requirements, like in all the libraries we need to install. Like this is a setup.py files which contain all the dependencies and I am just installing all the dependencies from here. I'm just configuring the Python interpreter on my site. Sometimes it's my issue occurs. So just... It might take 30 to 20, 30 seconds as well. So just configuring the Python interpreter currently. Okay, that's great. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. So that's okay. That's getting fine. So first of all, we have just cloned the GitHub repository. We have followed this step. Then we are going towards the our uh, setting the current directory as the clone folder, which is this folder. Then we are installing all the dependencies. Okay, so let me show you. Now we need to perform the segmentation. So we just need to go to the YOLO V8 and segment. So we just need to go this. Uh, so, so now we need to set this as our current part. So you just need to write CD YOLO dash V8 dash segment. I'm just setting this as my, I just missed one thing here. I just need to write ultra leaf. Because uh, you can see that uh, this is my main folder, ultra this is the subfolder, then this is the sub again the subfolder YOLO, then V8 and then segment. This is our tracking script which you need to run. So we need to move forward towards the directory first. Okay, I just make a mistake while writing. Ultra lytic spelling are not correct again. Mistake. So I'm just going to this folder. So first of all, we need to download the deep, deep sort files from this here. So just go to this folder. And this is the folder which you need to download. Okay, just click on download. It might take a few minutes, so let's wait until the downloads. So you can see that it's downloaded now. Just show in a folder. Just extract files over here. So this is our folder going to here. So just copy this folder from here. Just go to YOLO V8. My own data segmentation. This is a tutorial folder, and then we will go to Ultra Analytics, YOLO V8, and then we go to Segment, and then paste this folder over here. Okay, so now we have added the deep sort PyTorch files. Basically, why we need deep sort PyTorch because we are implementing uh, deep sort tracking into here.
So to implement deep sort tracking, uh, object tracking, here we are using deep sort algorithm. You can use sort algorithm, by track, non fair There are multiple deep track object tracking algorithm. But as far as which is the best algorithm, I have uh, as far as I have done testing, deep sort performs best. Deep sort is the one of the best object tracking algorithm. It's a state of the art object tracking algorithm. So we will be using deep sort algorithm for tracking. So. Uh, First of all, let's run the script because I'm just uh, running it on CPU. So it might take time on my side. And then when the script was really running, I will explain the code. So first of all, we need to have a demo video to run the script. So just copy this over here and just do this. Download a demo video. So I'm just downloading the demo video from my drive over here. Test.m1mp4 is the name. And now just running this script. So just running this script file. So just press enter. So it might take a few minutes. Let's see how it goes. Um, just as it starts, we will move towards the, I will just start to explain the code. So I'm just waiting for it start the execution. The checkpoints are done, all good. So I'm using YOLO v8-sec.pt pretend model on MS Coco dataset uh, to run this, to perform object tracking. So let me show you about this. YOLO v8 GitHub. So we have different models in YOLO V8. This is YOLO V8 Nano model, and it has it. Uh, it is very fast, but it is has compromised on accuracy. Like you can see that we we have the mean average precision at thirty seven point three. Uh, it is smallly small model. A small model. It is very fast in terms of speed, but in terms of accuracy, it is very not very good. It's an average accuracy. While with, with YOLO V8 X. It is uh, the most accurate model of YOLO V8 series. And, but in terms of speed, it is compromised. Like it is the, it has a less, very less speed as compared to YOLO V8. And so YOLO V8 has the highest speed. Like it is a very small model. It's, uh, it's 0 0.6, it's 6.3 MB. While you can see that, um, let me show you. YOLO V8 segmentation is around 137 MB. So, this is a quite big model and it's very small model. So it executes fast while YOLO V8 takes more time, but it's more accurate like YOLO V8 and is less accurate. So now we are running the script. So it might take some time, like you can see the directions are performing very good. Let me explain you the predict.py script. So here we have initialized our deep sort uh, tracking algorithm. You can see here, first of all, and these uh, these are the files which we use to create the relative bonding boxes around the pixel values. We are using this, and we are assigning uh, some color to each of the directive object. For example, if the person is detected, uh, we will assign. If for example, if uh, the object, directive object is a person, so it will be assigned a light pink color. So this is a pink color. So if there is a car, it will be assigned uh, like you can see that the color of the car over here. So, okay. So if we have the, for example, you can see that I'm just discussing about the boundaries box color. This is the bounding box. So if we have a car, the color will be assigned as pink. The bounding box color will be pink. So we are, we are defining only the bounding box color. So, okay. So if there is a motorbike, this will be the specific color. If there is a bus, it will be a specific color. So if we have, don't have a directed object in this category, like for example, if we have uh, not, if the object does not fall in either a person category, car category, motor bike category or bus. So if the directed object is a truck, so it will, then it will randomly pick a color randomly. But if there we have a car, person, motorbike or bus, it will stack this color which we have defined. So you can define color for any object. For example, if you are detecting a cricket bat or a tennis racket, you can define a specific color 
what you want, or you can even change the color of a person or car as per your choice. So here we are just defining a UI box. Uh, what does this function do? Let me show you. Let's just get a snapshot. Oh, I have this snapshot. Let me open. Just go to pictures, screenshots. That's all. No, no, this is another tracking. I'm just looking for some tracking like this. Open with, open with. So now I will explain you the uh, each function here. So what does this function do? Like, let me show you. This function basically creates this rectangle. Like this rectangle we have. This function creates this rectangle and puts the label tags inside this rectangle. Plus this function also create this bounding box. Okay. So like you can see that this bounding box, which has four corners. So this function create this bounding box. Um, bounding box. Plus it also create this as well. So basically this function create this bounding box and this above rectangle, which has 41 and card. So, and so basically bounding box plus label is assigned by this function. For example, uh, again, repeat if you have just missed. For example, we have this bounding box is created by this UI dash box function. Plus this above bounding box is, uh, this above rectangle is also created by this UI dash box function. And UI dash box function also assign this label as well as unique ID, okay? So what does UI box dash function do? It creates this bounding box. Plus it also creates this above rectangle and assign a unique ID and the object name to it as well, okay? So here we are uh, using, so this uh, cv.2 rectangle create a rectangle, this rectangle around the detected object. And this cv.2 rectangle creates a, this one rectangle, like you can see, this rectangle is created by this cv.2 rectangle. And here you can see that we have written minus one. So as you can see, this rectangle is filled. So this, uh, if we don't write minus one, or uh, if I write one, two, this defines the thickness of this uh, rectangle. So as we need to just fill this rectangle, so we have written minus one. While you can see that uh, here, we, uh, in other cases, we usually define the thickness of the rectangle. Like here, we have defined what is the thickness of the rectangle of the bounding box, what is will be the thickness of this. So in this case of above rectangle, we usually write minus one, so that it will be filled. Plus, you can see that here we are adding text. In the text, we are adding the label and the unique ID. This is the unique ID and this is the label. We are adding this, okay? So now we have just created this uh, draw dash boxes function. In draw dash boxes function, first we are uh, finding the center uh, of the bottom edge. Why, what are the cities are center of the bottom edge? Let me explain this. So the center of the bottom edge refers to Okay. Instead of cleaning this, just open your I'm very bad at drawing. I guess. Open with paints. For example, let me tell you what is the center of the bottom edge. For example, you can say, see that. So this is the center of the bottom edge. This is this is the center of the bottom edge which we are finding because we need to draw trails from the center of the bottom edge. This is the center of the bottom edge. So we basically we are just finding the bounding box bottom center. So this is the bounding box we have, and this is the bottom area, and we are finding the center of the bottom edge. Okay, because we need to draw the trails from the center of the bottom edge. We are going to draw trails from the center of the bottom edge. 
go to find center of the bottom edge then we are just get, getting get ids of the object so here we are just assigning each object a unique id like we have 64 45 so just finding the unique id of each object and here we have defined a function data dq here we have defined data dq let me show you where we have initialized so you can see here that we have here initialized data dq So data DQ is basically, a, it's called double-ended queue. Basically, we prefer data DQ over list uh, as well because in data DQ, we can enter or pop at the same time. For example, data DQ is a form of list where we can en uh, do an entry of an object. Plus, uh, in for example, uh, in the next frame, we have a car. We have a, a trucks enter. In the next, for example, in a frame, the trucks enter. For example, this is my current frame and I, this is the card which has entered the in my current frame. So I need to do the entry of this object into that uh, into my uh, into my series basically. So to do the entry, I am just storing these values. For example, uh, I am just storing that car has entered into this current frame. So I need to store this value. So I am just storing all these values into the data DQ. For example, in this frame, uh, the truck has exist which is in the previous frame. So I just need to remove the truck from the data DQ. So data DQ stores the number of objects, you can say that in the current frames, what we have. And for example, if the objects uh, is not in the, uh, which the object which is in the previous frame, but it's not in the current frame. So it removes that object. So it removes the ID from the list. So here we are defining data DQ. So here uh, we are just doing data dq dot append left center. So what we are calculating center basically let me center to basically we are finding the center of the bottom edge. Okay. So as I explained, we are finding this. Okay. So we are just appending these center values into the data dq double ended queue. So okay, in data dq, all these center values will be stored for each object. Okay. So now we are drawing trails. So for example, uh, we have all the data center uh, center of the bottom edge just stored in the data QQ. So using that data, I am just drawing the trails using cv2 dot tool line. So you can see that these are the trails we have using cv2 dot two dot line. So we have drawn this trail. So first we need to find the center of the bottom edge, and then we need to store the data of the center of the bottom edge. And then we when we have stored the data, then we draw the trails from this data. Okay, now here we are just performing the segmentation and here we are just writing the result. So here we are just running this function which we have created above, draw dash boxes, function and all this function. You can see, now here just, we are just running the script. So it's 86 currently, so it might take time to uh, other, to run so that like, I have already uh, run this script previously as well. So let me show you the output video here as well. So previously I just run this script over here and you'll look here. So the results will be stored in over here. Let me show you. You'll look here. Segment runs and detect and train. So here your results will be stored. Like you can see that we have the trails as well. Like you can see that we have the trails, this thing, and we have the detected object and the unique IDs assigned. Plus we have also have the trails you can see here. So this is how it works. So you, it might, uh, because I'm running on CPU, so it might take time. If you want to run a GPU, the same steps will be followed. So you can run the script and check it. And if you have any issues, you can ask. Thank you for watching this video. Bye-bye.